Welcome to the latest instalment of the Schwarzschild Weiss World Cup blog and this one is a double issue well you can sort of call it a double issue because the idea was to talk about uh, the two games the quarterfinal and the semi-final but you probably guessed uh, what the majority of this is going to be about so let's quickly go over the quarterfinal first not to say that it was an insignificant game obviously it wasn't the quarterfinal of the World Cup but a uh, good solid game against France Mats Hummels, good old-fashioned goal to win the game. France gave us a bit of a scare at the end, but overall it was a decent, solid performance by uh, the team. And against a team that I consider probably to be the second best in this tournament in the French. Watch out for them at Euro 2016, which is going to be on their own home patch. They're certainly looking like a decent team, and I think the tactics were absolutely perfectly worked out that day. And to talk about tactics... That game against France, that would see the final move from the 4-3-3 to the 4-2-3-1 system, which all of us, well I say all of us, most of us fans, not necessarily the football purists, but the fans of the National Mannschaft wanted to see. Philipp Lahm back in at right back, Sami Kadira, Basin Schweinsteiger playing the double six. And that's what we wanted to see, that's what we got, and that was a fantastically solid performance against the French. So, the French game, massive contrast to that of the se uh, second round against Algeria. Good, decent, solid performance, can't reiterate that too many times. So, against France, us winning that quarter-final, that led to a semi-final against Brazil in uh, Belo Horizonte or Belo Horizonte, however you want to pronounce it. I'm not going to get too pretentious or precious about it. So, what more can I say? Began the game, looked a little bit shaky, and I thought, OK, here we go again. Semi-final nerves, are they going to hit the team again? Especially Messiters, or a few really dodgy touches in the first five minutes of the game. Then we win that corner. Ball comes swinging in, non-existent marking, well you can't even call it marking, can you? Just uh, standing around like their feet in the mud by the men in the yellow shirts. Thomas Muller, brilliantly sh hooked shot into the back of the net. There you go, 1-0, 12 minutes gone, and we're already on our way. But you know what? On our way? That's probably an understatement, isn't it? So, we just need to wait another 12 or so minutes. And another mistake by the Brazilians. Cross comes uh, charging through the middle of the field. Nice little dummy and tap from Thomas Muller. And then for the, sec the second time of asking, who else? But Miroslav Klose. First shot saved by Julio Cesar, or Julius Caesar, as Marty O'Neill would call him. And then the second finish, tap, bang, back of the net. 16th goal for Miro. So there you go. That's one record out of the way. Who would have thought it? Who would have believed it when two years ago Klose said he wants to finish off his international career in Brazil at the World Cup and possibly break Ronaldo's record? Who would have thought it? Injuries this season, struggling, the age of 36, the high temperatures in Brazil, but there, he, there, we, there we have it. The goal that levelled up the record against Ghana, of course they spoke about that a couple of weeks ago, and then this, game, this goal here, typical closer effort, Close in, tap, tap, in you go, smooth as you like, 2-0, 23 minutes gone. And we're thinking, you know, we're, we're, we're in a... Give you a bit of a clue here as to what might have happened later on if you didn't know the result. Well, as, as if. So we're in seventh heaven already with a score at 2-0. And we're thinking, well, you know what? This is looking good now. Just keep it tight, youngs. Just keep playing the same game. And uh, we can see this one through. See this one through? Not a bit of it. Within a minute, there you go. Another error from the Brazilians. Brilliantly taken care of. Ball comes in from the right from Philip Lahm. Completely missed by the defence. Thomas Muller drops shirks out of the way in that typical kind of muller round style. Even though he didn't even get a touch. He's just mere presence there, sucked in a whole load of yellow shirts. And there you go. Just outside the box. Crash, bang, on the half volley. Tony Cross in the back of the net, and it's 3-0. And we're thinking, you know what, 3-0, can it get any better than this? Ah, oh, 
but then it did. Within 69 seconds, again, another record, two goals scored by the same individual in a shorter space of time, 69 seconds. Again, charged through the middle, this time uh, Mats Hummels, picked up by Kroos. Brilliant bit of interchange with uh, Mesut Ozil, and there you go, Kroos, here's another one, 4-0. In fact, it wasn't Ozil this time, that was uh, Sami Kadira who laid the, the pass in. I'm getting all confused because there were so many of these wonderful moves. So this time it was Kadira the provider and Kroos just, you know, easy like, stroked it in. 4-0. 4-0 after 26 minutes against Brazil. Brazil, now we're, we're talking now against a team that hadn't lost a competitive match at home for 39 years. 39 years. The last time Brazil lost at home I was four years old. I was four years old when Brazil last lost at home in a competitive match against Peru. 3-1 in a Copa America semi-final. So that was the magnitude of this. Now leading Brazil, 4-0, a team that hasn't been beaten for 39 years, 62 games at home unbeaten. And it's 4-0. And it's only 26 minutes gone. But you know what? At this point... I'd given up writing my match report, it's just too much. I just put the laptop to one side and just thought, you know, I'm just going to sit back and enjoy this. So you think, 4-0, time for a breather, time to get a cup of tea, come to get a cup of coffee, grab another beer from the fridge. <sighs> yeah, as if. This time, deserved goal, it was Sami Kadira. Set up nicely, nice little touch back from Mesut Ozil after the Brazilian defence were caught. Six and sevens, not even six and sevens. <laughs> six and sevens suggest that they have six to seven men in there actually doing something. It wasn't even that. It was just absolutely awful. So a little stab back, and there you go. Lean back, bang, bottom left hand corner of that. Sammy Kadira gets a deserved goal for him. A five nil after twenty nine minutes. Four goals in the space of six minutes. Absolutely unbelievable. That's another record. Four goals in the space of six minutes. And meanwhile, while this was happening. Germany actually overtook Brazil as the leading team for goals in the entire history of the World Cup. Now, that's quite a record if you consider that uh, Germany didn't take part in 1930 and they didn't take part in 1950. So there's two World Cups in which they didn't take part and Brazil have played in all of them. Yet Germany has scored more goals in these tournaments than Brazil combined. So they took that record of the Brazilians as well. Not only consign them to a massive home defeat in the semi-final of the World Cup, their own tournament that they're hosting, take the record as well of being the highest and greatest ever scorers in the history of the World Cup. But you know what? It gets better. We took a bit of a breather. First half came to a close. Second half gave Brazil a bit of a chance. You know, at the beginning of the, first, of the second half, they had a few shots on goal by Manuel Neuer. Absolute tight, and yet again, some fantastic saves. He could have he could have just gone to sleep for this game, and we were still upon it. But there you are, Neuer wanting to keep that goal completely unsullied. At least a couple of decent saves there, world-class saves to deny the Brazilians getting on the score sheet. And then, the 69th minute, you know what? We've had enough of this, not scoring a goal. What on earth? We've gone 40 minutes without scoring a goal. So yeah, we, are, we have another one. This time, move down the left, Ozil finds Lam out on finds Kadira out on the right. Kadira into Lam. Perfect as you like. Nice horizontal low ball. The kind of low horizontal ball across the box which the Brazilians kept missing. We saw this against Croatia, for example, in their first game. But they they've got no idea. The ball is skidding low across the box. Obviously, Joachim Löw and the training team and the tactics guys have gone into and looked into this. Straight across, and there you are. Converging on the ball is Schürrle and Müller. Any one of them could have put it away. Schürrle got there first. Right foot, tap. In you go. 6-0. Now that levels Brazil's greatest ever defeat in their history. In their history. Brazil. 6-0 at home. Well, it doesn't matter. 6-0 home away. 6-0 matches their defeat against Uruguay back in 1920. So they've got this now to worry about. So... And then, of course, it also breaks the record for the biggest score in a semi-final, which was twice achieved in 1930, I believe, 
but the last time it was achieved was 6 1 by the great Nationalmannschaft of 1954 against Austria in the semi final on the road to that great victory in the miracle of Bern, the Wunder von Bern. Anyway, I'm digressing because I've got more goals to talk about and perhaps the best one of the day. So yet another attack, this time down the right. Thomas Müller makes his way towards the byline, sees André Schürrle hanging around inside the box, hooks the ball back and inside him, Schürrle takes it with his right foot, controls with his right and bangs it with his left. Spectacular shot, tight angle, over the head of Julius Caesar. Well, he, he couldn't help anybody. Up off the inside of the crossbar, in the back of the net, 7-0. 7-0 against Brazil. It sounds good, doesn't it? 7-0 against Brazil. 7-0 against Brazil. And that was absolutely fantastic. 7-0. And you know what? It could have got even better. Some great saves by Neuer. And then on the other side, another fast break. And Mesut Ozil has the goal at his mercy. Now... I think I'm not going to pan Ozil. Now, I've been criticising him throughout the tournament. I have thought he's had a few weak games. This one wasn't one of them. And I think people will pan him for that miss. And I do think when it comes to his shooting at the moment, there's a distinct lack of confidence there. He's just not getting it right. He's under-hitting them. He's over-hitting them. He's hitting them wide. There's, there's, nothing, there's something not quite right about his shooting. But for the rest of the game... He played his part, more than played his part. He was involved in the intricate moves to set up at least two of those goals. And, you know, I really felt for him because he had this chance to really bolster his confidence ahead of the final by knocking in what would have been the eighth. Even better, you know what, if he wasn't so confident to take the shot, Andre Schürrle was screaming for it to his right for a hat-trick. But Ozil went for the shot and phew, it skidded wide. And, you know what, if the final whistle blew at that point, I don't think any of us would have been annoyed, but who can be annoyed when you beat Brazil 7-1? But it was 7-0 at the time with a minute to go, and yeah, you do get annoyed. Brazil break, Boateng is turned inside out by Oscar, could have done better, and Neuer is apoplectic at being beaten. And you know what? That shows the spirit of this team. And a lot of other teams would have said, you know what, 7-0, it's like the French against the Swiss. They didn't really care too much. They were 5-0 up, and then they conceded one and then another. They, they weren't really bothered. And uh, this German team, I'd, say, I'd accuse them in the past of being guilty of not putting their foot on it when they had the opportunity. So when they're in front, really put their foot down on the gas, well, one foot on the gas and the other very firmly on their opponent's throat. This time they did it. And you see someone like Neuer, who was absolutely incensed at conceding a goal. 7-0 up. No, no one should be bothered that much about it. But he was really mad about it. And this is the kind of thing you want to see. And this is the spirit in this team that I really wanted to see. And, uh, of course, now, looking forward to the title. Our hopeful fourth title in the final against Argentina. Now, Argentina very unpredictable team they've come through the first round with a lucky win over Bosnia Herzegovina another lucky win against Iran now Iran could have beaten them Iran had their chances they had some decent chances on goal could have had a penalty and you know what guess who pops up in injury time with a spectacular goal yeah made, made a complete messy of it yes that man messy Pops up and scores their winner. And then he scores another two as they beat Alger Nigeria 3-2. So three wins, not massively spectacular in the first phase. Second phase against the Swiss. 0-0 after 90 minutes. 0-0 and you think it's reaching, you're going to reach extra time. And they pop up and score a goal after 118 minutes. Two minutes left, Angel Di Maria scores the winner. And Switzerland, you know what, really unlucky, hit the base of the post in the last minute of extra time. So the Argentinians have been really lucky. And then Belgium, another game. I don't know what happened to Belgium, to be honest. Highly rated team, 
talented bunch of individuals did absolutely nothing against an equally insipid Argentinian team. This time Argentina got the goal early. Higuain's goal, ninth minute, something like that, I can't remember. But they, they, got, they got the goal early and uh, Belgium could do nothing about it. And I think everyone went through the motions for the remainder of that game. So 1-0 win for Argentina there. And then after the spectacular Brazil-Germany semi-final, we have probably the worst game of the entire tournament was Argentina against the Netherlands. Two really negative teams with a couple of star players just cancelling, being cancelled out. All you got was tap, tap, tap in the middle of the field. Not even any decent goal mouth opportunities until right at the very end when Robin was denied by Mascherano. Inevitably, after extra time, it finishes nil-nil, goes to a penalty shootout. And Arsenal, Arsenal, and Argentina find another Sergio Goicochea in Romero. Two great saves, or rather, one penalty was a bit poor. But uh, Argentina through to the final. And this is reminding me of 1990. Where Argentina got through tooth and claw, scuffed, clawed, crawled their way into a final. And uh, with a one-star man in their team at the time, Diego Maradona, now we've got Messi. Uh, I, I can't stand Argentina. And I'll, I'll be honest about it here, I, I share it here. Ever since 1986 and then 1990, people rave on about Maradona. Yes, he was a great player. But you know what? Beyond that, completely dislikable individual, playing for a dislikable team. OK, they're not as dirty as they used to be now, I think of 2006. But what I'd love now is just to give them a complete and utter hiding like we did in 2010. And to do that, we really need the early goal. We get the early goal, they'll then be struggling. Because you put a negative team like that whose mission is to keep out the talented teams, to stultify them, to completely anaesthetise the game. You, they, they go behind, then they have to try and do something. Then things open up, and then one can become two, three, four, and we can finish this quickly. So I'm really hoping for an early goal, much like in 2010 when Müller got the early goal and Argentina just uh, fell apart after that. So that's pretty much it. Of course, worst-case scenario is that it goes half-time, nil-nil, and then we start getting desperate and start looking too hard for a goal, and then that man Messi, who did absolutely nothing against the Netherlands yesterday, pops up and scores a winning goal. That, that's something of our worst nightmares. But on paper, we've got it to beat this Argentinian team. Confidence is high. This German team now has had a day's extra rest. I'll say a day and extra half of rest, because... That first half against Brazil pretty much killed the opposition and they could just relax for the second half. While the Argentinians have had a bit of a struggle, 90 minutes in not particularly nice weather, this kind of humid rain that they had in Sao Paulo last night against the Dutch. So they've got one less day's rest as well. So I do think there's the advantages there. We've got confidence. We've got the better team on paper. We've got the stronger bench. We've scored 17 goals in this tournament, as opposed to Argentina who scored eight. Yep, defence is more or less the same, despite all the woes we've had about our defence, and I still think it's a little bit creaky at points. We've only conceded four goals. The Argentinians conceded three, and that is probably the biggest point here, that Argentina have only conceded three goals. But they conceded two pretty weakish ones against uh, Nigeria, so that's something to bear in mind. And the kind of passing game that Germany play is something Argentina haven't come up against yet. You look at the opposition, the teams they've played, apart from Belgium who had the potential to do this and that didn't, they haven't come across a team that uh, potentially that could tear them apart. So that's pretty much my prediction for the final. I'm, I'm going to put my head on the block and saying okay, we're going to win this thing. By how much? I don't know. It could be very close. Depend on uh, Argentina, how, as I said, how that first half, that early period of the game pans out. Or it could just be a nice, easy stroll like it was against Brazil. So, I got no requests for the shirt this time. But I wasn't going to accept that anyway this time. Because it had to be the famous uh, Flamengo shirt. Or as uh, BBC commentator Steve Wilson would call it, the Flamenco shirt. Maybe it's getting mixed up with Samba or something, I don't know. Anyway, the Samba boys are out. They're playing... The Dutch Gloggish in the third and fourth place playoff. 
and it's Germany versus Argentina in the World Cup final. A repeat of 1986, let's say about that the better, and 1990. Probably one of my greatest memories, my greatest favourite World Cups, the final was not that great, but for Germany merely winning it, it became by definition a great World Cup. This one will surpass that by complete distance if Germany were to win this final in Rio in the famous Malacana on Sunday. So until then, I will definitely be back with a post-match report. It'll be a short one if it doesn't go too well, and you might expect another epic if we go on and win the game and uh, score a hatful of goals in the process. So until then, bis bald, viel Glück und Wiedersehen.